Good evening and welcome to the Celtic Way Transfer Deadline Day Special. We are here, we're live, we got there in the end, having some technical issues in the background before we came on air. I'm Tony Haggerty, at the Haggerty 10. Uh, welcome everybody and I'm joined tonight by Ryan McGinley, at the Ryan McGinley on the Twitter ha- no. <coughs> excuse me. Ryan yep. will be across all <laughs> forms of social media. <laughs> Excellent start. Uh, You'll be across all sorts of social media and let us know what's happening as we move along. But yeah, it's transfer deadline day. Let's recap what's happened so far. Ryan, Paolo Bernardo has signed on the dotted line. Leela Badas penned a new deal. And Brendan Rodgers was speaking today and he came out with some fighting talk and he was in bullish mood ahead of Sunday's Derby clash at Ibrooks. Liked a bit of that. How are you, first and foremost? Things are good, yeah. Yeah, the, um, it's been quite a long day when you think about it. I've been working 10 till 6, I stayed on a wee bit, got my dinner, got changed, got ready, and I'm back on here again. It's, it, it feels almost quite symmetrical, I would say, because <laughs> you start the day with the morning briefing, you might as well end the day with an evening briefing, you know, keep everything symmetrical. You go full circle um, in this job, or, or at least you do on a Friday night, so yeah, can't complain, going to be talking about Celtic for the next hour and 45 minutes, so... Yeah, it's, it's basically like, you, you know, I was thinking, oh, because we're starting this at 10, at 10 past 10, um, just due, due to me running a wee bit late, I was like, what is the, what's it going to be like? But then I thought, 90 minutes worth, there'll be there'll be 90 minutes worth or just over, that's just like a football game, so no Correct. complaints there. We will not struggle to talk about all things Celtic. Uh, I, f- I feel like Ron Burgundy, anchorman, uh, and I'm joined by... My sidekick Ryan there, uh, yeah. Well, Ryan Fantana. <laughs> so, so one yeah, of my favourite movies, uh, Tony. One of my favourite movies. Yeah, so I'm, we're both going to try and stay classy for the next ninety minutes or so, and Love see what that. it takes us. Yeah, see what it takes us. And I say, anchorman. I'm sure I've been called an anchorman before, Ryan, or something that sounds like that. Hey, eh? maybe, maybe my hearing had gone. Maybe it's old age stuff like that. But yeah, <laughs> now I can tell you that before I came on here, and you might have caught up with it by now, but one player that won't be coming in is Sidney Van Hoydonk. I got it from an impeccable source who told me that uh, Bologna are keeping him at the club, so he won't be coming in. So if anybody was hoping that Sidney Van Hoydonk would follow his father's footsteps and come to Celtic, it's not going to happen, certainly not yet. Bologna are holding him at the club, and he used to stay at the club, so yeah, but good evening everybody, we want you involved, uh, so throw all your comments into the chat, here's hoping it doesn't go bot crazy like it did this morning if you tuned into the the morning briefing. I think it we was, can laugh about it now, that, that being said, I was about laughing about it, it then, because yeah. um, cause I, I, I clicked the comments, now this is just, just a wee side story before we go into the, the discussion, but when you clicked in the comments, when you're, when you're doing this on StreamYard, do you, see, do you see a red notification telling you how many comments are coming up? It must have been over 100, and it was very difficult not to laugh when you pressed the comment button, and every comment said meow. I was like... Yeah. <laughs> what what is going on here? What is uh, what is transpiring here? But it seems as if we've got to the the bottom of it. We might need to revert to subscribers only in the comment section if it does happen again. But as it stands right now, it seems that the the bots are asleep and the and the, <laughs> the Celtic family are awake. So that's the main thing. <laughs> so the Celtic family's having a party. The bots are in their bed. Is that what you're saying, basically? Yeah, that's that. Is that, is that well, the bots are away. Imagine? The Celtics will play. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, correct. <laughs> nice one. Uh, I was hoping it was Jungle Cats, but I think we've been not infested by Jungle Cats. So sadly, I know, for those of you I, I know you. I know you like your squeeze. That. It definitely was not cool for cats. <laughs> it wasn't I was cool for send cats. Send those cats up the <laughs> It was indeed correct. There you go. It's going to be one of those kind of nights, guys. It's going to be irreverent as well. We won't. Uh, there's Leslie. No bam bots tonight. No bam bots like that. There might be bam pots, a... but not bam bots. <laughs> I think I've got a degree in bam pottery. To be fair, you know what I mean. So I'm sure I have a, a, a BA in pot. But there we go. But guys, yeah, throw your comments in. Tell us what you want. Still lots of people wanting a a left-back, Ryan, a striker and a goalkeeper. The goalkeeper who who has been uh, let go from OGC Nice, Kasper Schmeichel, people telling 
putting two and two together and saying, would he be worth a punt? Ryan, do you think Kasper Schmeichel would be worth a punt to come into Celtic? I, I think it's a non-starter to begin with, but I just look at the fact that I do not want to be ageist on any platform or whatever, <laughs> or in any walk of life. No, but Not I ageist in my watch. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's the thing. I had a look at the two ages, the ages of Kasper Schmeichel and the age of Joe Hart. Joe Hart is seven months younger than Casper Schmeichel. That's <laughs> how long that Casper Schmeichel has been around for. I remember when he was, I think he had a, a spell up north, up up in Scotland at one point. Um, and he, I, I think that was when he was on loan from Manchester City. I remember when he was in Manchester City. Then he made his move to Leicester. By all accounts, he's an absolute Leicester legend. He is probably, uh, he's probably more of a, a, a legend to Leicester than uh, Peter Schmeichel was to Man United. Maybe, maybe that is due to the fact that he went to Man City towards the end of his career as well. That'll yes. dampen things. But Casper Schmeichel is effectively a god in those parts and in, in the Leicester and the Leicester hearts and minds. So good goalkeeper, very very good goalkeeper. But I've got to be honest, the decline in, in his performances in the last few years in the Premier League were quite drastic. Um, yes, he struggled after that, which maybe says it wasn't all his fault, but he's a, he is an ageing goalkeeper. I don't know why you would replace an ageing goalkeeper with an even older goalkeeper. That doesn't make any sense to me. So it's a no from you, Ryan, for Casper Schmeichel? Yeah, it's a, it's an, I would, it would have been a yes 10 years ago, absolutely, but much like with, um, much like with Ryan Bertrand, it seems as if we're in the we're in the clearance section of the, the shop of the transfer window. If the transfer window is Tesco, we're at that clearance bit where everybody's fighting for the yellow sticker items. Um yeah, I, I don't I don't really I, I don't think these will do as much good in the long term. So yeah, I think we're better off maybe maybe even scouting the not even not even maybe looking at the, the free transfers unless you're going for David De Gea. If you've got a spare four hundred K a week, then you can give that to him. But I don't think that'll happen either. I think Celtic have just got to monitor the situation, look for any up and coming goalkeepers in South America or mainland Europe or even in Asia if there, if there are good goalkeepers coming from over there and then assess their options in January. You know, the start of the MLS season is around about that time as well. Joe Hart might want to move on by that point and Celtic will want a younger goalkeeper. If that's the case, then it's, it's all parties and, and Celtic will get a younger goalkeeper in. But as of right now, it's, it's looking like it's going to be Joe Hart. That's not my preferential, that's not my preferred choice, but. Nothing, nothing else is going to happen, so you've just got to get on board with it. Over 400 joining us, uh, so thank you for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, we always do. And if you saw me or saw the briefing this morning, you would have known that I was wearing a Roy the Rovers tracksuit top. Well, tracksuit top, Ryan, yep. And all my okay. love for uh, Melchester Rovers and all that. So I thought I would let you into another wee gem from uh, wow. my, the wardrobe and that's the 1980s Melchester Rovers kit Gola number 9 on the back Roy Race's number and uh, yeah that's one of the gems that's in the wardrobe which I face which used to which used to be the most talked about wardrobe in podcast history but yeah uh, yeah that's one of my prized possessions and also explains the colour scheme on the second book which I put red yellow that one there, going to geese a left door, mister, so that was homage to Roy the Rover, so your regular viewers will know what I'm talking about, like to kind of wear some Melchester Rovers stuff uh, every now and again, and uh, the older viewers will maybe remember getting the comics as a kid, I certainly did, there you go Ryan, blast from the past there, but just thought I'd, people always ask me what's in the wardrobe, so it's stuff like that. That's one that's one item that's in said wardrobe. So I just thought I'd uh, let, let the viewers see that. There you go. Were you a, were you a Mr. Ben man when you were younger? Did you watch <laughs> Mr. Ben's? I, I did watch Mr. Ben as if I... Uh, I, I haven't re referenced Mr. Ben a couple of times when I flicked up the links to the articles as if by magic the article has appeared. So that's my Mr. Ben reference, yeah. So there you go. Yeah, that they were always on at um late night when on like your children's TV programs, yeah. your children's <laughs> channels. 
because they'd ran out of all the new stuff to show, they would put on the old stuff from the 70s and 80s. So, you know, I got my I got my Mr. Ben fix, I got my bag puss fix as well, <laughs> you know, and all these all these old ones. I'm, I'm still very much aware of all of them. But yeah. I went I, I, I meant I to flick up this comment this morning from My Ball. He's a great tracks at top and the goal touch brilliant. He commented this morning that he got a letter from Roy Ray Stacks. I meant to flick that up actually because I'd starred it and I'd forgotten, but he, he's saying Roy Race is real. Could do a signing a striker like Roy Race, couldn't we? Uh, Alan Boyne saying, showing your age, Tony Gola, laugh out loud. Yeah, but it was, it was an iconic kit. It remains an iconic kit, iconic colours. Uh, and do you know what? I like any a bit of uh, trivia here. They, they had to take Gola off it because they weren't allowed to advertise in comics. Mm. Uh, the, the editor, Barry, editor who I'm friendly with uh, on Twitter, a uh, wonderful man, he he told me that, yeah, they, they got the sponsor and then they were told that they had to remove Gola from the, the jersey, the Royal Rovers actual comic strip because they weren't allowed to uh, to advertise like that blatantly. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> having done all that and got all that, they had to, <laughs> had to take it off. But yeah, a wee bit of trivia there for you, football trivia. But there you go. Now, talking transfers, Ryan, I wanted to let the viewers into my my own uh, kind of experience of transfers and being a journalist. I was going to tell them. Uh, I told this story before, I think, on, a, on another podcast, but I'll, I'll tell it again. I also written it as a chapter in the book and it's about Massimo Donati Momo and, Massimo uh, uh, Massimo Donati and uh, I got the exclusive on the Massimo Donati story and it's the most uh, unlikely exclusive you're ever meant to you're ever known and I'll tell you why now I was uh, was told that Celtic were interested in Massimo Donati on the Monday and I contacted his agent Andrea D'Amico who represented quite a he's quite a stellar agent in, in Italy and I contacted Andrea D'Amico on a Monday and he got back to me and said maybe later in the week that was it and it got to Friday and Jim Trainer, who was my boss at Daily Record at the time said to me anything happening with Massimo Donati Tony and I was like nah the trail's gone cold I said that I've sent him three or four messages in, in all the days Says he's not get back to me, and he said, "Get a hold of him." I says, "I can't make somebody answer their phone." So all day Friday, nothing. Left the office at six o'clock. It was kind of gnawing away at me because as I left the office, Jim said, "You need to get in touch with him." And I was like, "Okay, I'll try." So I've gone home, tried him one last time. Seven o'clock, nothing. I've gone to the Bonnie Prince Charlie Bar in East Kilbride, and I've sunk about. I think between eight and ten Southern Comfort and lemonades are my spirit kind of guy. When I was when I was drinking, I don't drink anymore. So I'm getting there. I'm pretty well on, well oiled, and it's not away. It's about nine half nine, and I've thought I'll try him once more. So I phoned, and I'm expecting it to go into an Italian voicemail message, yada yada yada, and somebody answers the phone, and all I hear is. Yes, Peter, I have faxed the deal over three million pounds for Massimo Donati transfer AC Milan to Celtic. So by this point, I've kind of sobered up and I've gone all John Travolta. <laughs> keep talking, oh, keep talking. So it's like a four, five year deal, whatever it was. And I've just I've just switched on and I'm kind of and I've said, uh, no, this is Tony Haggerty from Daily Record newspaper in Glasgow. <laughs> so <laughs> Andrea D'Amico's he switched on as well eventually with the cats out the bag and he's went like, I know speak of the English, I know speak of the English and he's hung up the phone. So I phoned Jim Trainer and I've said, Massimo Donati signed for Celtic. I said, it's a, a four-year deal, three million quid from AC Milan. He's like, how do you know? And I said, well, I said, and then he hears the background noise and he's like, where are you, Tony? I was like, I'm in the boozer. <laughs> he's like, how many, many have you had? And I'm like, too many. <laughs> he's like, that. no more drink. Because you're going to have to write this. He says, how far are you away from your house? I says, too far. He said, right, I'll phone you back. So he phones me back in 15 minutes. And he says to me, you're spot on. He says, that's... And I'm saying, I think my, uh, Andrea D'Amico was waiting on a phone call from Peter Lowell. He clearly was. Mm -hmm. And I think he saw the UK number. I don't know why he never stored Peter Lowell's number, but the UK number flashed and then he just started talking. 
as he sent the fax through. <laughs> and I, so James Taylor's like, right, Tony, write it. So I'm standing underneath a lamppost and he says to me, but your penance for drinking is my name first on the back page exclusive. So the back page exclusive was by James Taylor and Anthony Haggerty and I was so annoyed at the time. As you would as you would be. I was spitting feathers and it's and if you get the back page from when Massimo Donati sang for Celtic, uh, it's by uh, James Taylor and Anthony Haggerty. But as I've got older, I've kind of went okay because he made a call that you know confirmed it all. But yeah, so you know, Mana from Heaven. That's called Ryan journalistic Mana from Heaven. Right place at the right time. Half cut and uh, stumbling across like uh, you know it was a big deal at the time because Celtic shelled out three million quid from him. So, at AC Milan as well at that point. So yeah. that was a big name. You know they were a massive superpower yeah. in world football at that point. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so that was. <laughs> and I've told Massimo Dinassi that story he was killing so laughing. And uh, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I was. I still this day. Um, I still get annoyed with the fact that I was told to put the bosses' names first. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, and we used to say, like, good old-fashioned sports journalism, as, as Francis P.C. Green says there, in the pub scooting and ends up getting a scoop. That's where all the, the good stories came from and all the kind of exclusive used to come back in the day of the uh, real, you know, sports journalists who, you know, honed their trade in such horror stories and got the scoops and snippets of information that turned out to be to be true yeah so that that's one of the chapters in the book and you know i i just i still can't believe that it transpired like that you know what I mean? it's just like mental isn't it absolutely mm-hmm. mental yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm starting off in my journalistic journey. You've got all these stories about. <laughs> I know, but that's the thing. You've been you've been there, and you, you've cut your teeth in all these situations. You know, you've told so many stories about your experiences. For me, going into it, you know, a lot of my experiences so far have been during like a lockdown or that. It's yeah. very, very, it's very different. That's how I completed my studies. I went back to college during lockdown and then university during uh, COVID when everything was from home. You've actually went and cut your teeth. I've not done as much. <laughs> I've not done as much, but... You will. Yeah, Trust that's me, absolutely. You I've will. got all that to look forward to as well. You will. But, um, and, uh, I, I see somebody in the comments asking if you've ever met Henrik or, or Jimmy Johnson. Now, I know that you've met at least one of these people. I met both. Uh, wow. I had the pleasure of doing Q&As with Jimmy Johnston and uh, several members of the Lions, like uh, you know, Jim Craig, uh, Bobby Murdoch, God rest him, Bertie Old. They, they used to do a circuit with Bertie Old, Bobby Murdoch, myself and Jinky. You know, and I used to always start by saying, no, we've got three European Cup winners medals and a, a Scottish Cup school select runners-up medal between us. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I used to look at the, the, the table and think, what am I doing here? But these, these were pinch yourself moments and brilliant guys, absolutely humble and just the best, the best company to be around. And I told the story in this the, my Celtic moments about how Bobby Murdoch treated my dad, you know, and uh, it, it was the... Best feeling in the world, introducing my dad to Bobby Murder. That was his hero. But uh, I was in awe of Jimmy Johnston. Just used to look at him, and he was just a wonderful wee guy. And you know, and the stories are, are legendary. But he, he was just cracking company. Him, Bertie, and Bobby were just like, you know, it was laugh a minute. They they, they really were a band of brothers, and just see to be able to be in amongst that in a sanctum. I, I always said that if it ended tomorrow. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you've you've had that pleasure, and they, it, it's the greatest pleasure because they are the benchmark for every Celtic side. Uh, that's you know, it's came since they they defined the modern day Celtic. But humbler guys you'll never meet. I had the pleasure of speaking to John Clark recently, and uh, he was talking about the you know, parade in the cup on the coal lorry and all that. And I love all that. I, I just I, I can't. As the song says, you just can't get enough of that. And just to be in these guys' company, was it was surreal, but it was also it was surreal, mind-blowing, and it was uh, life-affirming. Because this was a team that my dad watched. You know, they were very successful 
as you know, and Jock Steen was my father's hero. And when you sit in their company, you, you, you put that, you know, you put a zip in that and you open them and you just absorb everything like a sponge. And I just used to sit there and just laugh and, you know, and, 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 they, and they never, uh, they didn't think that you were an interloper. They were like, what, what's your thoughts, Tony? And you, you would speak away and, and they loved it as well. You know, I mean, I, I became really friendly with Bertie Alder and Jinky before he sadly passed away. And it was it was sad that I only had a few years with the likes of Jinky and Bobby Murdoch, eh, God rest them. But I had some wonderful times with with uh, with Bertie latterly. And uh, but I cherish those kind of Q and A's with with Jinky and Bertie and, and, and Bobby. They were the kind of staple. Ronnie Simpson, Feather used to turn up as well now and again. And uh, I. I I just loved them. As I say, I always sat at the end of the table thinking, you know, it was a talking heads. You know, and you may ask yourself, how did I get here? You know, it was just like, it's a pinch me moment. Yeah, you know, correct. Aye? And you're just looking and, you know, and, and my dad was always in the audience and I, I was just like, wow. You know, it's, uh, and you just, your, your heart swells with pride. You just, just think you're, you're, your career takes you to all sorts of weird and wonderful places and you meet, all sorts of wonderful people, but those guys are, they're just the pinnacle. They are, uh, you, you'll never really top that. And as for Henrik Larson, I, I said the other week, I, I described 242 of his goals and I used Alan Stubbs. It was a classic. Uh, Alan, can you introduce me to him out, out the road? <laughs> the, 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 old, the old Frank Sinatra joke, isn't it? With the guy, can you give me a mention, Frank, trying to impress a woman? And the guy's like, the song goes out to your man, and he goes, beat, beat it, Frank, I'm with a bird, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so I did that to Alan Stubbs. I was always, Alan, how are you doing? Because I, I used to do the Edinburgh beat when I was in, at the record, and Alan's obviously the, the manager that led Hibs to the Scottish Cup. And uh, he was like, oh, sure. And, and uh and as I say, I described 242 last and goals for the pullout when he left. And I armed with a, you know, with the, these laminated sheets and a, an ink marker. I I thought, the Elvis, it's now or never. And I was so, so nervous. And uh, Alan Stubbs was like, sir, you'll be fine. And he introduced me and Henrik was like, and he said to me, he never read the papers, but his son loved it and he kept it as a souvenir Jordan when, when he left. And... Uh, and so I, I unmasked myself as the author, and uh, he was like, "Oh, she's where do you want me to sign?" He said, "In fact, give me them all." And he signed, he signed every, every side of it. You know, there was about two laminated sheets that was for six sides, and he signed every side. And uh, it was just like surreal. I was just kind of standing there and all. And as we walked away, he was still kind of. As I went to walk away, he was still kind of reading, and he got to the the goal, the thing of beauty against Rangers, and he just sort of went. Poor Bert Conterman, <laughs> and, the, and the three of us just kind of burst out laughing. And yeah, so I, I, uh, like yourself, you're starting off, Ryan. You, you never know where it's going to take you. And uh, it, but believe me, it's a, uh, it's a life. Uh, when you say less ordinary, it's life more ordinary than than not. You know, and I've uh, had the pleasure of meeting my own personal iconic hero. Maradona as well. I'm just a wee guy, Fisco Bride, and there's a picture of me with on the front of the cover of my first book with the <laughs> famous player in the world in the 1980s. And you're just like, honest to God, it's uh, you know, you, you, you've got all that to look forward to, embrace it, and it's it, you'll love it. It's just, it, it is a wonderful life. It's, it's a true saying, but always keep your feet on the floor and just. I only ever speak about these things when people ask me. It's not something I run about telling people because uh, I'm still quite, I still kind of retain some humility about me. It's not a trait you see often, I would think, in in many journalists that you've ever came across, but I, I'm always kind of, you know, I, I, I try, you know, I, I, I like to think that I was brought up right. My mum and dad are my best pals. I stayed with them till I was 41 years of age. There you go. <laughs> they never, <laughs> never okay. talk about outstaying your welcome, that kind of thing. But, you know, it was just, just the way it was. And I, uh, I've i shared so many experiences with my father. Football experience, we still do it. 
And uh, honestly, Ryan, it's uh, you and the fact that you support this wonderful football club, you'll have memories to cherish when you're my age. I'm 51, so how old are you? 25. Well, we'll reconvene in 26 years, right? All right, when then. I'm, when I'm 75 and you can tell me all, all the things that you've been up Well, I'll know because I'll be charting it anyway, but you can you can wax lyrical like this about meeting so many Celtic heroes. You and mm -hmm. Just going to bring a comment up. One? Yeah, just... You know, th th a lot of people do say that about footballers, but I've, I've got to say recently... I did manage to meet a couple of uh, the the current team after after the League Cup final. You know the the game that they beat Rangers. Um, yeah. It was Alistair Johnson, Jota, Anthony Ralston, Connor Hazard, etc. Cameron Carter Vickers. They all couldn't have been any nicer. You know, it's it's a really good group of players at Celtic have just now, especially Alistair Johnson. You know, we all know that he could talk for for both Scotland and Canada. <laughs> But yeah, what a what a lovely guy, and it's great to see him back in the in the starting lineup, and he'll be massive on Sunday, I'm sure. Yeah, without a doubt, it's uh, you know, and and it's guys like that that you wish every success to, isn't it? Who come in from you know a, a foreign country and just embrace it and embrace the Celtic culture and the Celtic way of life, and and uh, you you wish them every time, you know, success every time, and we. Guys that come in and they speak and when they go into a press situation and they're not shy in coming forward in terms in terms of speaking, you know, we, we love that. You know, some some interviewees are better than others, you know, but it's uh, and guys like Alistair Johnson are worth their weight in gold because they give you something. As you see, you, you don't have to work too hard to get uh, lines as it's known in the profession, isn't it, Ryan, to get a line out of them. You know, a hook for your story, and uh, Alistair Johnson's as a dream. He's he's a cracking guy as well, and he and he's got the right kind of mix of humour as well around. Doesn't take himself too seriously, and so I, I like that about Alistair Johnson. And I think uh, I think Ange instilled that in a lot of that group, didn't he? That he brought in that uh, humility trait, but humorous trait as well, because Ange had his own kind of deadpan sense of humour as well. And uh, I think Brendan will be great for all of their development as personalities and characters as much as he will be for their, their football ability too. He'll bring them on. I mean, I, tonight when we came on, we were hoping that things would happen, but Celtic have done a lot of business early, haven't they, Ryan? And we're still hoping that there might be a goalkeeper, a left-back or a striker coming. Mm -hmm. Depends on what Brendan Rodgers you listen to. He told the broadcast that there could be more coming in. And then later he spoke to the written press and he was a wee bit more kind of uh, reserved, wasn't he? Saying it might be the kind of end of the, uh, yeah, and the window for Celtic. I remember you and I were talking about that. I think we were talking on the phone earlier and we were saying that we don't know when those timings were with regard to the one that he did yeah. with Sky Sports and then the one with uh, that was on the YouTube channel before the press the press conference with the media. It, as it turns out, Anthony Joseph did tweet a couple of hours ago saying that the one it's the one at Lennox Town out, out with uh, Gordon Duncan. It was Gordon Duncan and Brendan Rodgers. It was only about a minute and a half long, long the one that sounded more positive when it when it came to uh, transfers potentially happening. It was about an hour between those two. And the answer that you hear on the press conference one on YouTube is the accurate one out of the two. The one, it seemed as if there wouldn't be any more. Um, whereas when that one with Gordon Duncan was completed, uh, Bernardo hadn't been announced yet and therefore... There, there was still some to there was still a player to register or a player to confirm. So it seems as if the later one is the more accurate one, as you would expect. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I, <clears throat> I read that earlier. So that earlier, so I, uh, I was thinking that 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 was the case. So could be busy. It might not be. David Blakely Kerr comes in and says Tony was the best Lisbon line Lisbon line you've ever met. Do you know what? Every one of them. Uh, that I met was on an equal part. You could not separate that band of brothers. See, when you stand in people's company and they just make you want to cry because of what they achieved, that's how I felt in the company of the Lisbon Lions. You know, not so much not worthy because they would be the first guys to say, don't ever treat us like that because we're just normal human beings. But they achieved something monumental. And 
to stand there and listen to them talk about uh, football and life in general and, and the kind of situations that they they grew up in. I, I just used, I was in total awe of the Lisbon Lions. They are the greatest Scottish football team bar none and will be the greatest Scottish football team bar none for many lifetimes because it will not ever be repeated. First British team to win the European Cup, first Scottish team to win the European Cup, whatever you want to put the first non-Latin team to win the European Cup and all within that 30 mile radius, that Glasgow District Select that Hugh McIlvany famously called it. it. You know, just to be in their company was that that for me was like winning the European Cup uh, career wise for myself. I always felt uh, that I was in the company of special, special people and they were and, and I couldn't, David, I, I could never, I wouldn't want to rank them in any order because I know how much my father loved him, and my only regret about it all is never ever meeting Jock Steen. I'd love to have met Jock Steen. He'd probably have chased me <laughs> uh, many times. Did the Sir Alex Ferguson trick to see if I would come back for more. Had I come back for more, all right. I would have took many. Uh, I boot up the backside from Mr Steen just to get five minutes of his time. So I'd, I'd have loved to have asked him about football in general. But I, I uh, you know, but to meet some of the guys that served under him and played under him, that's been the, the biggest, I think that's been the biggest career privilege mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of my journalistic profession. That and the, the Maradona uh, episode, obviously, but in terms of in terms of speaking to, to Lisbon Lions, the, these guys were just, they're extra special. And uh, as I say, there's not many people in life that give you that lump in the throat feeling every time you're, you're, you're with them or you're anywhere near them. And those guys did. And I just think that uh, the enormity of what they did still being brought home, they're still making money for Celtic. Uh, you know, we spoke about the the cash pot that they brought in uh, for the four points for coefficient points. And I still think it's a wonderful idea that the e uh highlighted by saying that some of that 1.1 million euros should, a percentage of that should go to the remainder of the husband lines and uh, and their families. I, I think that's a wonderful, a brilliant gesture from Celtic and a wonderful, uh, uh, a fitting way to uh, to highlight the fact that they're still bringing in money from their coefficient points. And I'm still championing the 1030 tunnel. I want the 1030 tunnel at Celtic Park. I want the tunnel named after Bertie Old. Uh, I don't know what it's going to take for people at Celtic to listen to me and get that done. But I want the 10.30 tunnel, <laughs> I want entertain, can they play uh, the lyrics to the Celtic song on the tunnel uh, so that it becomes a, the equivalent of welcome to Anfield uh, when people come to Celtic so they know that they're uh, coming to a special place of football worship and you know, <laughs> a pilgrimage basically to a special football and arena. It's just the way I think about things. <laughs> I told you, I'm a, I'm a hopeless romantic, or maybe just hopeless, Ryan. I think that's, you probably end that sentence there. <laughs> uh, I'm still happy with that, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I, I see a couple of people in the comments that are wanting to talk about the transfer window. We, we're trying to we're trying to get a balance because at the same time, you know, it looks as if Celtic have shut up shop for tonight. There isn't going to be any more deals that happen. There's nothing nothing even close to being in the pipeline. So this this deadline day special is now and officially we're opening it up to the floor. Basically, we're <laughs> talking about a, num a number of, of of topics you could say from the game on Sunday to the the business that Celtic have done. But any any questions that anybody has in the comments section that want to put it to, to either Tony or myself, then you're more than welcome to get involved and join in with the chat. I just wanted to bring up all the players or I wanted to list all the players that Celtic have signed in this window. I was going to say so far, but you're better off just saying that they've signed because it doesn't seem as if there's going to be too many additions, if any additions, to, to that <laughs> list. So I, I counted them there as you were speaking and there was 10 um Ten transfers, yeah. both in terms of a uh, loan transfers and permanent transfers. So I'll, I'll I'll read them all out. So Celtic, obviously, they uh, 
completed a mandatory purchase of Tomoki Awata. That, that fee was round about £830,000. That's been credited in two sources. Then the first proper one, I remember just a couple of days or maybe a day or so after Brendan Rodgers came back to the club, was Odin Tiago Home. We'd heard that name for a couple of weeks. And then it happened when he came back from his holiday. That was about £2.5 million, followed by Marco Tellio from Melbourne City, who we've yet to see in, in the Celtic colours, but we're hoping that he's, he's fit he's fit and ready soon so we can get a proper look at him because I feel like a lot of people are forgetting about Marco Tillio. You talk about all the forwards and the and the wingers that Celtic have, but I've not seen anything of him bar him walking into the stadium, basically, and doing a press conference. That's all Celtic yeah. fans have got to base on him. And the highlights clips, then there was a double signing, a, a double Korean signing of Yang Hyun Jun and Kwon Hyuk Kyu from Gang 1 FC in Busan Eye Park, followed by Mike Navrovsky. That was those three that were sort of unveiled at the same time. Um, Mike Navrosky, I think, was the highest uh, the highest transfer of the window at around £4.3 million, which was then followed by Gustav Lagerbielka, uh, Luis Palma, Nat Phillips, and then later on this evening, Paulo Bernardo. Just out of those 10 signings, how do you think Celtic have done in this window? Um, do you think it's been a, a satisfactory window, or do you think there's some... There's some positions that, that were desperately needing reinforcements and they didn't get them, and they may rumble on till January. I think most people want a goalkeeper, a left back, and a striker still, don't they? I mean, the Celtic have did some pieces of business this week, but they had to do some pieces of business this week, didn't they? And I think they got in the players who were rumoured and you thought were coming in, i.e., Lewis Palmer, a defender, Nat Phillips from Liverpool, and uh, Paolo Bernardo. So those were all ones that you were aware of that Celtic were in for during the course of this week. I still think it's been... I hesitate to use the word underwhelming, but it's not been overwhelming, has it? Up until, nah, they, signed the these, yeah, up until they signed these three players this week, it had been really underwhelming. Everybody's worried about being Champions League ready. Uh, Retro Celtic saying left back was a must that you agree with that, you've been banging on Absolutely. about that all week and uh, there is still time but I think at 10 to 11 on transfer deadline day an hour and 10 minutes, I don't think Celtic are going to bring in a left back do you? and that was the, the point we when we said we were coming on for two hours we might have no no signings so we had to, you know had to eat up two hours of the clock talking about all things Celtic. We we were hoping that there would be more uh, activity, but it might well be that Celtic have backed up tools and uh, closed shop for the evening. We There was that feeling about it, wasn't there, before we even came on air? But, you know, they've, they've shocked us before by producing a rabbit from the heart late, late doors, but I just can't see it. But I think Goalkeeper, left back, striker remain a priority still. And if they don't get them, well, it doesn't look like they're going to get them in this window. Certainly, they're going to have to look at that again come January, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you can't do all the business in the one window. I totally get that. Financially, it's just not possible. And in terms of the resources and bringing so many bodies in, you risk the fact of losing. You, you risk the, the chance of a of losing continuity in the team because you've got too many players, too many new players in and around the first team. You can't have wholesale changes in one window. Postacoglu did really, really well with regard to bringing in effectively a rebuild of players. He had to bring in players that were 25, 26 mm. years old because they had to do the job straight away. They had to hit the ground running. They had to be tactically astute and ready to play this specific type of, of way. More of the signings this year have been more, you could call them project players, but they are younger players. The squad average age is probably a lot younger now. You look at guys like Adam Moy leaving the club and getting replaced by Odin Thiago Home. There's 12 years of a difference between those two players that play in the same position. I think that's effective planning. I just feel that if Celtic had brought in maybe a couple more, a left back and a, and a, and a goalkeeper, people would be absolutely delighted. But at the same time, I, I do think that people are getting more, more annoyed about the transfer window because of the fact that there's injuries as well. The injuries can't be helped. It's just put a dampener on everything. And I think the transfer window is one of those things it's put a dampener on. Also a dampener <laughs> because of the fact that Celtic have dropped points um, 
you know, points in the last game and then they were out of the League Cup. I think if Celtic had been at 100% and they'd won every game so far, then there wouldn't be as much um, sort of grumbling about the transfer window. Just so happens that's not the case. Celtic have faltered in two games out of their, what is it, five so far? Four or five? Um, so yeah, it's, it's not ideal, but there has been some good business. I think you've just got to be balanced in your view. Yes, there's positions that could have been that could have been strengthened. They'll they'll get pushed forward to another day in January or or next summer if 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 the players are, if the players that are currently in that position do well and, and and they can do that, then it may get pushed to the summer. But I think there has been some good work done in this window. But yes, there are there is room for improvement. There is always room for improvement, but it might just be for another day. So of the players that they've signed this week, Ryan, who starts on Sunday? Um, well, there's one that's definitely having to start. That's just due to necessity. In that Phillips, yeah, he's Phillips. got to play. Um, after watching, after watching Liam Scales, unfortunately, last weekend, the, the boy just looked out of his depth. To be perfectly honest with you, um, I know, I know you didn't see as much wrong with his performances as I did, but I, I just think he was slow, laboured. Um, the 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 speed of passing, I think I think that's something that you take for granted. And we took for granted with regard to Starfelt because, yes, he did look gangly on the ball. He did look quite awkward. But he did distribute it with, with a speed that Liam Scales evidently does not have when he's in that centre-back position. That's a That was a move that came by surprise because of Starfelt's uh, situation. The fact that Celtic Vigo came in, it was a better life choice for him going to Spain to be closer to his partner. That's It's just the ins and outs of it. And he's playing in La Liga in a top-five league. That's one that Celtic didn't prepare for and they had to act on quickly. It's good that they got Lager Bielka and to remedy that problem. But I think it's just going to take time with this defence. I think on Sunday, the fans, I know, I know there'll be no Celtic fans at, at Ibrox, but at the same time, I think fans have got to be patient with the defenders that come in. It is very much a makeshift defence and it's going to take a couple of games for it to really get going. But as long as it does the business straight off the bat and keeps the ball out the back of the net, then I don't think anybody will have any complaints. Would you throw in Lewis Palmer? Absolutely. I think, I think Lewis Palmer... Is the wild card in all of this, or the unknown factor, the unknown <laughs> quantity? Um, well, he, well, he is known because he, Rangers did want this player as well as Celtic. So you know there is they do have a rough idea of what he does bring to the team if they if they actually wanted them as part of of, of their squad. I know that didn't happen, and Celtic got him off the back of that. Um, Celtic showed their interest late on in the window, and and he was only too happy to join the club. Yeah, very, very exciting player. You know, the, the highlights clips, they make everybody look good, as I always say. But, you know, goals, assists, deliveries into the box. He seems to have a trick. He dances when he scores. What is not to like about this player? You know, a South American player. You're just wanting him to bring that, that South American style to the wing, to the left wing for Celtic. And if he can do that, then I think Celtic have got a good player on their hands. And Paolo Bernardo... Would you start him on Sunday? Mm, again, he's even more of an uh, unknown. Quant- he's even more of an unknown quantity than uh, Paulo Bernardo, I would say. But at the same time, you know, he's getting games for the po- the the Portuguese under twenty one national team, so we must have something about him. You know, people might put two and two together and say, "Oh, he's he's contracted to Benfica, therefore he has to play for the under 21s You know, Portuguese under twenty ones. There's a great gr- crop of players coming through there at the moment. You look at the current team that uh, Portugal have; they've got good players on the periphery as well, waiting to come into that senior team. I'm sure that if you're a central midfielder and a Portuguese uh, national team, even if it's only under twenty one, you've got something about you. He's been brought in with potential. There is a the scope to to bring him on permanently if he if he does a good job, and if he earns his permanent move, then that will indicate that he has done a good job. Because Celtic will then fork, fork the money out to 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 make sure that he has a, a permanent Celtic player next summer. But the ball's in Celtic's court and the ball's in uh, Bernardo's court to, in order to to make that permanent move a reality. And I uh, I hope he does it because then if he does do it, then he has has done a good job over the season. Yeah. I alluded to earlier that the manager spoke today. I just wanted to flick up a quote when he when he was asked about the team taking time to adjust. This is what he said, Ryan. And we liked it because the Celtic we put it out as a, a tweet on its own as well, didn't it? He says, I'm not here to jeopardize the strategy of the team 
or lock the team and myself into anything that would fail or not work. It is just time. I don't want to go on about injuries, but there are injuries to key players that could make the system function. I have absolutely no doubt I know how to win and I know what it takes to win and I'll show the players how to win. Might not be in the first game of the season, but over the course of the season and the course of my time here, I believe we will do that. I love that. Absolutely love that. That's exactly fight what we talk, want to hear. Fight and talk bullish ahead of uh, Celtic going into Ibrox on Sunday with 52,000 uh, awaiting them in the so-called Lions Den, bear pit of Ibrox and no away support there. But that's what I want to hear from my manager. I was very buoyed by that. We've been pretty optimistic all week, haven't we? We've been pretty positive about Celtic's chances. Again, the window's not shut. We're hoping that Celtic will add either a goalkeeper, a left-back or a striker, but we're being pretty pragmatic and thinking that it ain't going to happen. But I like that from the manager today. I have to say, it doesn't guarantee you a win, as I put out in a tweet earlier, but it guarantees you that he's all over it and he, and he knows. And it's said to me that he's got a plan. <laughs> he's a man with a plan. I was, uh, you know, I say connect dots and joining lines as I always try and do, but that struck me as a man that knows exactly how he's t- the team that he's putting out are go- and knows how they're going to play on Sunday. And he's pretty quietly confident that Celtic can get a result. Yeah, and, and I think it, uh, the longer the week has gone on, the more confident I am for the game. Yes, there <laughs> is a bit of trepidation. You've got to look at the defensive issues that Celtic have. It's not even ideal just now, even though they do have players in the door. Because, you know, even Lagerbelka, he is a new player. He, it's, it's easy to forget that, but he, he's been at the club, what, two or three weeks? But he's still a new player in the grand scheme of things. Nat Phillips have been here about two or three minutes, never mind two or three weeks. Um, and he knows, he pretty much knows You're get, he's getting brought in for for an emergency role. He he is going to play on Sunday. That's the way that everyone was talking about it. He was in training today. There was videos of him training, as was Lewis Palmer. I don't know if he's seen any of the clips of Lewis Palmer training, but when you look at somebody and they've got an mm. aura about them, they're like, you're going to be a good football player. I just got that off the videos. No, it's not based on anything else, but the aura, the aura that he gives you. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of him or of any of them. Hopefully, starting on Sunday, if he could be the one to make the difference between the two sides, then he'd be going a long way. It would go a long way to him being an instant Celtic hero. Um, yeah, it, uh, Phillips, he he will be there. He 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 will be starting that game. I don't think there's any doubt in that. Um, and if Palmer starts, then I, I wish him all the best and hope that he, he has an absolutely tremendous debut because that means that Celtic will be getting the best out of him because they've started them, they've given him that chance, and he's repaid the faith in the he's repaid the faith in the manager and the, or the or the faith that manager the manager has given him or installed into him. I'm 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 just I'm more and more looking forward to this game the more it the more it comes along, as you do with these games. I know some people get nervous before them. I do get nervous about an hour before the game, but um, beforehand, it's just that anticipation. I want, I want to see it. And when I'm least nervous is when kickoff happens because then you, you can do nothing about it. That's it. It's starting. You've just got to watch it happen and watch everything happen unfold, unfold in front of you. Um, I know you'll be at the game on Sunday, Tony. Um, I, I would be so much more nervous at the game than on than watching it on the television. I, I, I'll say that just now. But I'm hoping that you'll bring good luck on Sunday. Yeah, I was. I'll, I'll be there in my capacity as a working journalist looking forward to it. It's, uh, it'll be a weird experience, one would have thought, but uh, certainly I'll let you know uh, my feelings on it uh, in the fullness of time. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. As I say, I've been pretty co- confident and positive and optimistic all week. Nothing, nothing that's happened in the last few days has made me change that view. Graham Stewart coming in, says one hour left, can't see anyone coming in. Is Sorrow the only one out? Sorrow signed for <clears throat> Beta Jerusalem. Sead Haksabanovic is seems to be erring towards signing for Pauk now. There was uh, rumours of Stoke coming in to try and hijack that deal, but it's still kind of up in the air a bit, isn't it? There's no official confirmation of where Sead Haksabanovic's next football destination is going to be. Well, certainly not that I've seen. 
uh, yet still remains a fight between Stoke and Pauk, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's between those two sides. Um, I don't know what one Haksabanovich would prefer out of the two of them, to be honest. Um, well, Sugarman's just come in and said he's gone to Stoke, just announced. There we go. I don't need to decide between the two of them. That's a sorted <laughs> for him. Yeah, Championship, as terrible as this sounds, um, the Championship's probably a better level than the Greek First Division. That's just the way the Championship is down there. There's so many teams looking to get up to the Premier League to get those riches that come along with it. But there are quite a few teams in the Championship that are rich because of that, because of the parachute payments that they get from getting relegated. It seems like a yo-yo or a merry-go-round with regard to the teams that go down and go up. There has become a wee bit of a disparity between the teams that have been in the Premier League and the ones that are trying to get there of their own accord rather than uh, without any of these parachute payments that they get. I know they're trying to do away with them, but it is very difficult to do that when they've been ingrained into the footballing system for the past 10 or so years. Um, for Stoke, Stoke are one of these teams that are wanting to get back up into the Premier League. They were they were stalwarts under uh, Tony Pulis, I remember. They were a horrible side to watch. <laughs> I remember a match of the day, I think it was, uh, was it Rory Delap with the long throw-ins? Uh, yeah. That was meeting uh, Rick, Ricardo Fuller up front. Yeah, the yeah, headers. yeah. That was usually assist by Delap um, and then <laughs> a goal by Ricardo Fuller. Delap, his son now plays for Manchester City, I'm sure. Um, so it, it just shows you how the football and world spins or it, it goes about with regards to connections. Yeah, for Stoke, um, they've had a couple of players like Haksabanovic before, particularly in that time that Mark Hughes was in charge. Remember when he had the Barcelona contingent of uh, yeah. skillful players? He had Afalai, Bojan, who was always linked to Celtic every single window, it seemed. <laughs> yeah. He was one of those players. Bojan, he was yeah. one of my yeah, Bojan Kirkic that was the... He's another hacking yakking type, wasn't he? That was linked to yeah, Celtic absolutely. every window. Kevin, Kev, Kevin Doyle as well, Stephen Fletcher. Yeah. Stephen Fletcher came out in the media actually quite recently and was talking about how he was desperate for that move to happen, but it never did. There was again links with him in the 2020-21 season about him potentially coming in. So if they went for a year, you know, it's one of those ones. I don't know what would have been the better option <laughs> there. But Stoke for Haksibanovic, do you think he could do a good job there? Championship, there's more games to be played. You'd think he would maybe be a starter for, for Stoke down there in the Championship. Do you think he could make a, an impact? I think he could, but I just think it's bitterly disappointing the way Celtic career is kind of stalled. He signed a yeah. five-year deal you know, last summer and you know a year into that, less than a year into it, he, he doesn't want to play for a manager like Brendan Rodgers and he's coming out with nonsense on, you know, Twitter, or, or sorry, Instagram, Instagram uh, social media. You know, I, I had my say the other day, you, you want to play for Celtic, you've got to act a part, be the part, both on and off the field. You know, he, he, he can go to England and, and be as successful as he wants. I think uh, by by doing what he did, it's just really unprofessional. And I have to say, and I don't want to be disrespectful to him, but I don't particularly care what he does at Stoke because he's not playing for Celtic, and if he becomes a good player at Stoke, I'll be a bit annoyed that he didn't show the same kind of professional attitude at Celtic. Knuckle down, fight for your place, and instead run off to Instagram and put up posts about not being valued and all that. You make yourself valued by performing on the park, you know, and all and all the kind of, as Brendan Rodgers said today, it's, it's the new kind of way of football players, but it didn't bother him. I think that was quite emphatic. He didn't care less, you know. He had a word with him and clearly head not in the right space. If your head's not in the right space under a manager like Brendan Rodgers, there's a door. Would Would Haxabanovich have done that if Ange Postacoglu was in charge? That's my question. I don't think he would have. Um, that's putting two and two together, but I just feel like uh, uh, Postacoglu, I was going to call him Ange there. Uh, I think he brought that sort of his way of the highway mentality. Maybe Brendan Rodgers is more pally with the players or he had a better uh, personal relationship between the players. I, I don't think I don't think he would have done that under I, under well, Andrew Postecoglou. I don't know what gave Haksabanovic the, the the right or thought to to be so emboldened to come out with that kind of statement. You know, it'd be different if he was producing every week and he still found himself relegated to the substitutes bench. You know, he was an impact player, made a couple of decent impacts. Every time he was handed a start, he flattered the deceive. And uh, 
and was dropped the very next game, was he? He was back in the bench, back to where he, you know, where he, when she came, basically, every time. Uh, and he got that, he was, remember, he got that start he against Hearts. He was giving that start against Hearts at Tyne Castle, yeah, yeah, and, he, and, and he was a wallflower. Yeah, did nothing, and uh, you can bump your gums all you want, and you can go, you know, you can say you're unhappy, but the thing about it is, years ago, players, I, I, I say this on Monday, players used to look for a kind of a, a journalist that they trusted, and, you know, there was a, a mutual relationship there, then they would go to the papers, and the papers would get an exclusive, and, you know, you'd have the down on the dumps photo of the player saying, play me or I'm off, type thing, all that kind of stuff. You know, and there was usually only one winner in these kind of situations. Ah, you're off. <laughs> you're off, you know. But now Instagram, Twitter, all these kind of uh, social media sites, you can just go on and say what you like. You can be cryptic as you want, or you can just go straight to the point. And uh, I, I think Brendan Rodgers is... Uh, I think Celtic and Brendan Rodgers have done the right thing here. You know, get him out the door. You don't need that kind of negativity and influence around the dressing room where you have a player who has an inflated sense of their own worth and not contributing to the cause. He's a non-contributor. It'd be different if he was a, a, a massive contributor. He's a non-contributor. You know, and I, and I liked Haxabana, which I thought there was a player there. But show me why I think you're a player. Show me why lots of Celtic supporters think there's a player there. Don't go in a huff. And certainly don't go public and spit the dummy and let everybody know your your inner, your innermost feelings. You know, you just because you let yourself down, you let your teammates down, you let your manager down, and uh, you'll find out the hard way. Because Stoke ain't anything like Celtic, and uh, no, there won't be as much anyway, pressure on him. That's for sure. I, and uh, if he does well or not, I don't particularly care, because my focus is Celtic playing Rangers on Sunday, and uh, and uh, w- the season moving forward, and Brendan Rodgers and the team finding some form. And as the manager said, he knows how to win. He's been there over the course uh, and done it before. And in time, this team will learn how to win. So, yeah, I'm happy that Baksahanovic, uh, Haksabanovic even, is out the door. Uh, and I, uh, I'm i happy about that. And I think Brendan Rodgers is slowly but surely assembling a team uh, that's, you know, that wants to play for him and to play for Celtic and to be successful. Uh, Retro Celtic coming in, he definitely did go in the half tone. Yeah, he didn't cut it. Celtic move on exactly, and uh, and a, and a, you can score thirty goals for Stoke all he wants. When if he's not scoring them for Celtic, I don't particularly care. You know, I'm only interested in the players in the here and now that want to play for the manager and beat the club. And uh, with fifty minutes to go, there's still no sign of a left back Ryan or a goalkeeper. Or a striker, we can throw out all the names in the world, but it appears that Celtic have uh, put the put the tent away, as they would say, the transfer tent away. Uh, but we we all kind of live in hope that something last minute will come up, Ryan. Yeah, I'll give you a left back. Michael Nicholson has left, and he's now back in his house. That is <laughs> that is the left back for what, this transfer what, window. What, what, watching the Celtic way. And, yeah, and if, if he has, they, they, they guys think much. something's going to happen, you know. It's, uh, popcorn, see, but, uh, popcorn, yeah. stroking the cat. <laughs> he was in charge yeah. of the cats as well. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Um, Saying, dream on, dreamers. You know, so uh, you know, you got your, you got your three players this week. That is enough. Um, yeah, it's, is, it, is it enough though? I no, I, I know, I know. Is. It's um, uh, so was it three players this week? Let, let me just count them all. Yeah, yeah. three players. Well, Palmer, uh, Phillips and Bernardo. I was talking to my friends in a group chat and I was saying that two, would, one would be unacceptable, two would be unacceptable, three would be satisfactory, four would be good and five would be brilliant. So I think we're, I think we're on that satisfactory sort of uh, stage at the moment. Yes, there are still glaring areas of weakness for me. Must do, do better. I think that, One of the ones at it's, it's school when you got your must I, do I think, better. <laughs> I think that Celtic can always do better. That's the thing. I think they should be tr- yeah. striving not for perfection. I know that is very difficult to get, but the next, the next row down from perfection. That's what Celtic <laughs> should be going for. You know, always room for improvement, regardless of who they bring in. It is disappointing the fact that they never brought in a left back, especially since Greg Taylor has been noticeably struggling in that role. 
The the bigger problem for me was the fact that Burnaby is not competing with Greg Taylor for that left back yeah. spot. Now we could talk we could do a whole separate podcast on uh, the not the misfortunes but the misfires of uh, of Alexandro Burnaby since he joined the club. I just that, there's off field issues, there's on field issues. I don't think tactically he's all there at all in terms of what he does on the pitch. Um, his passing leaves a lot to be desired. I just think for a player that was just under four million for Celtic, he should be doing a lot more to be pushing yeah. Greg Taylor. See if the on field issues outweighed the off the field issues, you would cut him some slack, wouldn't you? That's the it's thing, he's very, been excused. It's, it's the very fact that he's came for a heavy financial outlay and did next to nothing, scored a goal at Ross County and scored a goal in a pre-season game when he ran 60 yards and chased somebody down and he actually thought he's starting to knuckle down and you know and, and wants to fight for his place but not we have seen nothing nothing that he's not he's not the player that you thought he signed eh? you thought he no, was far better than what he's shown and maybe he is far better than what he's shown so far but Again, you go back to this was a guy who was coming in to challenge Greg Taylor. He got excited about it, and they just and I get that players take time to settle, but he he's made more headlines off the field than he has on the field, and that's been the biggest disappointment uh, when you're signing a three point seven five million worth of of left back, and it's been a problem and it's been a concern since. Bernabe wasn't challenging the way you thought he would and Celtic know, know that and Taylor has now been asked to rip up what he's done in the past two years which he did to an exemplary level but he's having to tweak his game now and he's just struggling a bit under the new system and I get that that take time when he might eventually come good under Rodgers but I think in order to safeguard everything you you would have made left back a priority too in this window. Uh, so, and other people are asking: Could Liam Scales uh, deputise at left back on Sunday? He could, yeah. Will he? I, nah. I don't think so. Uh, so, <laughs> somebody saying, "Love how Tony changes the pronunciation of Bernabe, Bernabe." Per many one from two. Bernabe. Yeah, Bernabe. Okay, we'll call him that then. But you know, so I I think that's been a disappointment with Bernabe that he's just not come in and laid down that marker to Taylor to say, I'm coming for your position. But again, Celtic have been well aware of that and maybe trying to give Bernabe every chance and he's just not he's just failed to kind of perform. You know, for both managers, for both Ange and Brendan, and if you can't perform for Ange or Brendan, then I think you have to look a wee bit inwardly, don't you? And, yeah, uh, rings on the wall, I would say, for that. Something you're doing is clearly obvious. It's clearly obvious what you're not doing right because two managers in a row clearly don't fancy you to be the first choice left back. You know, when Burnaby came into the club, everybody thought, and I tweeted this at the time, I said... I expect Bernabe to be starting. Celtic don't go out and sign players for under four million, just under four million to sit on the bench. They don't have bench warmers for four million. They can't afford that. Therefore, they're not getting their money's worth with Bernabe at the moment because because uh, either Taylor's playing too well, which he isn't. He was last season. You know there was no way that Bernabe could get into the starting lineup due to Taylor's incredible form, particularly at the start of the season. You look at that game against Hearts in particular, where he scored the winner. He scored so many big goals. You think of that goal that he scored at Livingston too on the plastic pitch. Bernabe was so far out of it. He did. Bernabe did score that long range goal against Ross County. Yes, I think that bought him some time. But I just think the off field misdemeanors with the yeah. With the court, the court, the court summons, with the um, waking up late for training you know, or the team meeting, these things add up, and I think Celtic fans are just getting a bit, a bit miffed by it all. Like, what, what is a, what is Burnaby contributing to the to the overall, the overall team for the amount that Celtic paid for him? I, I would be expecting a lot more. I don't know about you. Brown Warrior coming in and said, "Why would you go and spend four million on a wing back and then not play him as a wing back? Who planned that?" Ange, well, 
guess that's one way of looking at it, isn't it? He, he seems to be better going forward. He's, he's kind of Celtic's answer to James Tavernier, isn't he? He can't defend, but he's very good going forward and can contribute that way. He uh, doesn't have half, ha- the main, half his man, <laughs> having many goals. It's yeah, of course. Tavernier has, but, unfortunately. But certainly, he certainly looked better in a more, uh, as, as uh, Brown Warrior said there, as, as a wing-back. He yeah, comes back in and says that's his game. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not disputing that. I think he is better served for Celtic further just, forward. But his passing's erratic. It's the old Walter Smith one, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is dreadful. Every pass with Scott Nisbet was an adventure. You know, mm-hmm. and I think uh, oh, he's passing like that, isn't he? Yeah, every pass is an adventure, dreadful. you know? No, he's an absolute... So. I think you can just call it as is. He's an absolutely <laughs> dreadful passer of the ball. Um, it's like a... It's like a mystery bag or something, like a like a mystery box or something of what where his pass is going to go. It's like a randomizer on it. You know how when you press shuffle on a playlist and you don't know what song's coming next. That's Burnaby with passing. That's, that's it's just so. Every pass. Yeah, you don't know if it's going to be an absolute zinger of a pass, but maybe a zinger bit in the wrong way, <laughs> and it just goes the opposite way. Or it's um, yeah. I I just there's too many. And, and I know Brown Warrior comes in and he's talking about wanting Bernabe to be playing as a wing back. Celtic will not accommodate for a for a, a left back to be played as a wing back, just a one player. It's going to be what's best for the whole team, and players need to play in their positions. Unfortunately for Bernabe, and he needs to learn this pretty quickly. He's going to need to adapt or he'll perish in this team. It seems yeah. like he is he is perishing. He's not getting game time. You know, I see well, more. I see more. The manager doesn't fancy him, does he? The same way that he doesn't fancy Iwata, by the looks of it, as well. You know That one confuses players. me, I'll be honest. Yeah, you know, he, he clearly fancies someone like Turnbull. He's given Turnbull every chance to prove his worth under him, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah stuff like that. So you, I always go back to the fact that managers watch players in training. Every day, you look at their attitude to everything. They, they watch them. And it was the, the great uh, Bill Shankly quote when he said, whenever somebody comes into Liverpool, he says, if you think that we're not watching every move you make, you're sadly mistaken. He said, within days we'll know everything about you. <laughs> it's always it's very menacing because he has that gruff voice, you know. He said, we know you know what you do, your routines, we know everything about you. And and there's a bit, a bit of that, you know, with, with Brendan Rodgers because he's all over everything. And... Uh, as you see, he's a different he say, type of he manage, might, Yeah, he might say he's not on social media, with. but he knows people that are on social media. Oh, yeah, he, he'll be all over everything. He to tell me, and he said today that he had a conversation with Haksabanovic, you know, about social media. So it'll have been flagged up to him or he'll have been well aware. So he's all over everything. So you, you go, you trust their judgment, don't you? I know the, the old trust the process became a bit of a, a cliche and a mantra and all that kind of stuff, but you do trust managers' processes, and I, t- I certainly trust Brendan Rodgers' managerial processes. If he is not playing players, it's for a reason. He sees them every day. He he, he sizes them up. He he assesses everything about them, and uh, there was clearly something he didn't like about Hitati initially, and he gave him that warning shot saying. You have to do more to be, a, 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 you know, a, a certain starter in my team. And I know you love Hattati and lots of Celtic supporters love Hattati. And he say, you know, argument for him saying he was the best player there. But it was a real warning shot saying, you know, you're no starting my team. Here's why. You've got to do more. So I I like that. I, I think the truth, the truisms and, the you know, and just, Bear honesty with players is, is magic and they have to take it on board. You know, and if you if Hitati there's nothing to suggest that Hitati was swanning around as if he's an automatic pick, you know. Go back to the, the body language experts and all that, you know. I think Brendan Rogers was just sort of it was a, a warning shot to everybody. You know, you need to produce more if you want to be shock. part of my team moving forward. Aye, and you know, uh, Hitati was uh, the one that he they aimed the kind of barbed comments at, and and, that, and that's fair enough. I, you know, he's the manager. I, I, I'll never 
dispute what the Celtic manager is saying because they know far more than you and I because they're, mm-hmm. they're around those players every day. So I I trust his judgment on that. And, I, and it was what I was talking about from Monday onwards. I trust his judgment to get it right, to come up with a system and a style that will make Celtic fiercely competitive on Sunday. And if you're going to come down to brass tacks and talk about tacticians, my money's on Rodgers getting the better of Michael Beale on Sunday if it comes to a tactical now and tactical battle. Could be wrong in that, but I'm quite confident in the fact that I'd rather have Brendan Rodgers in the Celtic corner sending a team out to beat Rangers than Michael Beale in Celtic's technical area. And I'm I'd stand by that. I think I think it'd be the same the other way about yeah, as well. I think it'd be. Know? I think that, yeah. and I, I know a lot of people won't admit that, especially on the other side. But I think that you know they know. I think the the opposition fans they know Brendan Rodgers is a good manager. There was that uh, trepidation when he did return. You, you see it on social media, especially with with fans saying, you know, he is a good manager. They may they may not admit it, but they they know Brendan Rodgers ran the show in Scotland when he was up here the first time. Um, there's nothing nothing to suggest apart from maybe the early season form. I'm sure that'll get rectified. Uh, the same won't happen again, because it could. It very easily could. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that first showdown goes, because I would uh, my money would be on Brendan Rodgers to out-tactic the, the opposition manager, that's for sure. Yeah. We've still got, what, 37 minutes in the hope that the Celtic do something in the in the window or what's left of it, uh, and hopefully still trying to actively get in a left back. Sean Gregg, no more signings. It's beginning to look like that way. So mm. yeah, I didn't want to pull Celtic. this up, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, well that's fair enough. We, you know, people are uh, we are hoping that Celtic do some pull a late rabbit from the hat as they say, Ryan, but it doesn't seem to be uh, that way. We did have a feeling when we came on just after 10, 10 past 10, that it might be an hour and 50 minutes of, of filler really, eh? and no killer, no no uh, signings to speak of, but uh, we've just ha- we're just over the 600 mark people. I know, I was, I was about to say, so yeah, much. 600, but the, the, the views that, recently have been uh, absolutely incredible. We we really appreciate that. It's uh, been a long day for everybody, but we hope that some of the new signings will walk straight into the team for Sunday. And I I think I keep going back to it, but the mood music is vastly different from the mood music after full time or so against St Johnston Saturday. Again, it's no guarantee of a victory against Rangers at Ibrox on Sunday, but you certainly feel a lot better within yourself and within. The fact that uh, the manager and the team looks a wee bit better and more prepared, and you've got we get players in for positions that you 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 hope they would strengthen. Not every position, but you know you, it's not been the perfect window, as you say. Perfect window is too much to ask, wasn't it? At Tony Ramos, Spanish it's sure Kyle Mack can play left back under Brendan. So he's Brown no Warrior. Comment. No comment. Brown <laughs> Warrior. <laughs> well, not having well, that well. yeah uh, Thomas Gallagher over 600 views and no bots thankfully Thomas that was incredible this morning it Just... might have been the reason why we had of 800 viewers on in the morning podcast but I'm just yeah. do you know what i seen i seen the 800 number in the top left of my screen as we were doing the morning briefing and I'm going to choose to believe that all of them were real people tuning in at 10 o'clock in the morning or 20 to 11 as, as the numbers were coming in and they were tuning into the Celtic way. I don't know what was on that day. I don't know if it was transfer deadline day. I'm going to choose to believe it wasn't the bots and it was an extra 100, 200 people. So thank you. Even if you were bots, thank you for uh, joining in because um, that's George, appreciated. <laughs> George Wilson saying this, he wasn't very happy about Brendan Rodgers coming back, but he's gradually gaining his approval. I think everybody knows that Celtic uh, transfer window could have been better uh, not perfect by any stretch but at least they didn't sit in their hands Ryan this week they got some business done they concluded the business that we thought they would which they were initially linked with a left back would be as you say 
excellent, would be well welcomed. Uh, a goalkeeper would be most welcome to it, and a striker would just be out of this world, but there you go. Patrick Welsh, brilliant stream, guys. Real Pete Tories insight and Ryan analysing the point in question. You guys are fantastic. Patrick, that's very kind. That's a very humbling comment, that. Uh, so thank you very much. Glad we're a tag team, you and I. <laughs> yes. I don't know how much you know about your wrestling, but we're like, I don't know, we're DX or uh, the Hardy Boys <laughs> or something. Um, I don't know if you'll know. You you might know Big Daddy Haystacks or, or that. <laughs> 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 uh, that uh, wrestling, the world of sport, Kent Walton and all that. That's more my era, <laughs> I and I. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, big, uh, big Daddy, Giant Haystacks, yep. Indeed, that's uh, kinda, that's my... Uh, uh, my era, as they say, of wrestling, or I don't even know that the was it WWE or WWF. The only one I knew it used to be Hulk WWF, Hulk. Aye, but now Hulk Hogan. one is now yeah. yeah, that's Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah, Brett Angel and all that, about that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm just trying to find the wee thingy. Two wee seconds. I'll find this. Just pull it back up again. Give me a wee second. Give me a wee second. <laughs> I can't even find it. I'm going to... Ross Evans took the words out of my mouth. Easy. Easy. <laughs> I'm going to bring this up again. Go on. Because I think it's I think it's worth talking about once again. Because it happened yesterday and I've still got the graphic for it. So I'll just bring it back up. Just a wee reminder. It's how to in the Champions League group stages. And we will be facing Feyenoord, Atletico Madrid and Lazio in the group stages of the Champions League. In case you missed... In case you missed it a couple of days ago or yesterday, rather, we did a, a live reaction podcast, an instant reaction. We watched the we watched the draw and then came straight on after to talk about the Champions League. I know maybe a lot of people are thinking that Celtic didn't do enough enough business for the Champions League, but I still think they can compete against these sides, particularly against Feyenoord and the Lazio team that are certainly faltering in Serie A at the moment. I know Atletico Madrid. As I said yesterday, they've started like a house on fire, but they have just lost um, João Felix. He is going to Barcelona in a loan deal. It seems as if that that move to Chelsea sort of reinvigorated his career. Now he's moved to Barcelona, which would be a perfect fit for him. Um, that's one less attacker for Celtic to worry about. They just have a couple of others in the form of Antoine Griezmann and Memphis Depay <laughs> to worry about. For Lazio, it is a Ciro Immobile, you know, a, a club legend over there now. And Feyenoord, I think Feyenoord have, let me think, let me think, they've got, do you know, I actually couldn't name a Feyenoord player at the moment, but they've got more and more of like a, a, a team ethic. They don't have any superstars in their team, but they've got, they always put 11 really good players on that pitch and, and they'll be, a, they'll be a, a very decent challenge. At the end of the day, they won they won the league, they won the Eredivisie and that was one ahead of PSV, obviously, and PSV looked absolutely brilliant the other night against Rangers. So, yeah, yeah they will be a good team. I think their I think their star person is their manager, Arne Slot, who your, was your, linked with your, the. Your sorry. homework will be to be well versed in these teams by the time the Champions League rolls around. We Two out of three wasn't be, bad, Tony. Uh, we'll, we'll, Tony. Uh, we'll be we'll both be well versed in these teams by the time the Champions League competition rolls around. Yep. I, Listen, you look at these teams, they don't fill you with dread, do they? I said yesterday. No, they fill you with Celtic confidence, can, I would say. Yeah, I think Celtic can caution. be highly competitive in all, all the fixtures. Again, that's no guarantee of of wins. But I don't look at that and think, well, we're writing this off already. No, if you're talking about any of them being a heavyweight, then you would say Atletico Madrid, wouldn't you? But, Are we going on about wrestling here and about heavyweights? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but we Celtic could be know, going for the knockout I, punch against all of these yeah, teams, that's for sure. Yeah. No, but the one with the kind of most European pedigree recently is Atletico Madrid. They've appeared in a couple of Champions League finals. So They were but, so unlucky not to win that year. I think it yeah, was a late so, header from Sergio Ramos. Yeah, and they ended up losing 4-1 after extra time. So, you know, but I look at that group and I think I can't, I can't uh, think why any reason why Celtic can't be fiercely competitive in that. The chips will fall where they do, but I think also people are just disappointed in the fact that they, they wanted to be really tooled up to have a crack at it. And hopefully they'll get players back for various stages or various group games of the group stage in the Champions League and 
Celtic will get better. They will hit a run of form and the attitude and the mood music around them will be vastly different. European competition, European football at that level is vastly different in the mindset and what's required and the players will know that themselves. So I think Celtic season really starts on Sunday. You know, they've had a couple of wee minor roadblocks and bumps. Blip, blip, call it what you like, but they can really kickstart their campaign on Sunday by putting in a, a convincing performance, getting a good result, and sh- and the manager showing that they can play a, a certain style, formation, call it what you like, and uh, you know go to the rivals' backyard with every every kind of you know odd against them, with the crowd against them, and a depleted team that kind of thing, and if you can come away there with a win, then that's a, a wonderful marker. You're laying down there right away. So I think uh, I think it's uh, uh, I think that's imperative that Celtic do that. And Celtic certainly put up a better showing in, their, showing in the past couple of weeks. So yeah, I think there's a couple of jokers in the comment section there, is there not? Yes, there is. Um, I'm trying to find some of the jokes in the comments, but <laughs> um, yeah, that, it's always it's always the same in, in the comments section. We do really really do appreciate everybody turning up, even at half eleven at this point. You know, twenty five to twelve, yeah, six hundred and ten people at the moment, and it's rising. It seems to be rising quite a bit as well. So we really do appreciate everybody's comments. Just before we get into the last twenty five minutes of the show, just going to bring up the ticker tape at the bottom. Um, if you do enjoy what we do, please visit www.celticweed.co.uk forward slash subscribe. You'll get more free videos, um, more analysis pieces, uh, instant match analysis from the game, stats bomb pieces from myself. I was going to say scouting reports, but you won't be getting them until January. So we're, we're going to have to find something else to fill fill that section of the of the website. But I'm sure there'll be there'll be plenty for for Stuart to to write about in terms in terms of football in general. I'm sure he'll help with the analysis of, of different games and different uh, events that are happening with, with regards to Celtic. So if you are interested, please visit the website. The link is below. Uh, four pounds for four months in. And you you would really be helping us, and it helps us continue to do these videos. So if you're interested, please please give us a give us a try. Um, do you want to maybe talk about some of the players that didn't leave the club in this window? Just going on to them, um, it looks as if James McCarthy is going to be staying at the club for another window. The lesser spotted James McCarthy. Sometimes I need to check SNS images to see if he's still training <laughs> with the club. Sometimes you can catch a wee a wee glimpse of him in the in the Lennox Town photos, but he's he's not part of any match day squads. He's probably <laughs> he's probably hanging out with Benjamin Segrist in that regard because the two of them can't get into any of the, the squads whatsoever. It seems like, yeah, I said Benjamin Segrist is probably another player that didn't leave the club. He's he's getting absolutely no game time whatsoever either, and um, I think maybe a, a new goalkeeper would have been required if Benjamin Segrist did leave the club, but he's staying where he is, so that position isn't getting uh, remedied as such. Uh, for for James McCarthy, we both know he's not going to make an impact at Celtic. He's made very, very little impact. The only impact of real note that I remember was him putting that pass to Burnaby for the, the cross to Yakimakis against St. Johnson at McDermott Park, that 95th, 96-minute goal uh, to secure the win after Celtic uh, conceded a late equaliser. That's the only thing I've known that, he, that he's did. It's been a, it's been a disappointing... Um, couple of years for, for James McCarthy you know I think there was a lot of I, I know we spoke about James McCarthy on the on the morning briefing today but I, it's one that's tinged with a bit of sadness because back 10 15 years ago Celtic were linked with him at Hamilton it wasn't 10 years ago it was more it was closer to 15 years ago now you would say but Celtic were desperate to get that player it didn't happen he went down south I think it was to Wigan first then then Everton Great, well, a decent career down there until the injuries caught up with him. Then he played for Crystal Palace and then Celtic. But it is a, it is a very disappointing sort of turn of events the past two years. Good player on his day, he was a great player on his day, but it's it's just not worked out for him. Nah, I think you just accept some players it doesn't work out for, does it? And you know, through no fault of their own, they they can't get a move to a club uh, in in the windows because no nobody will take them. And then it, the onus is on their parent club to either sever your contract or 
or just run it down and see it out. And, uh, you know, I, I think McCarthy's just been the victim of kind of old age and injury catching up on him, isn't it? So it's just, uh, he said, a stellar career down south and stellar career for Republic of Ireland. But he, and he got a move to his childhood uh, heroes, but it, it just hasn't materialised at Celtic. And, and it's a shame for both parties because I think uh, the Celtic sports would love to have seen a player like McCarthy. But I think you have to accept that they just signed them past his sell by date, didn't they? I think it was one of these players that Dermot Desmond was desperate to see was at the club at one point in his career. <laughs> you know, he's, yeah, I think much like Kevin Doyle, much like the names that you've mentioned, he was one of the players that was constantly linked with Celtic yeah. in the transfer window. Remember, uh, was Celtic not close to getting him in Brendan Rodgers' first, first stint at the club? Uh, yep. One deal when he was at Everton. That never transpired, obviously. He made his, he made, he made his uh, move to the club in the summer of 2021, and it just has not worked out for him, for one way or another. I did say, when I seen him coming on, he, on his debut, I think he made his, uh, his debut in a pre-season friendly. I was like, this guy, I don't know if he's got the legs and for an Ange Postacoglu system. I mean, even be better players down south are finding that out. Look at Pierre-Emile Hoiberg at, uh, at Spurs just now. He can't get in the team because he's just not got yeah. the legs to do to do Ange Postacoglu's system. But he can't even get in a he can't even get in a Brendan Rodgers system. So, yeah, I think the all signs all signs are pointing to the exit door at some point for a uh, for for James well, McCarthy. You just hope that that isn't the end of his career, but it is looking more and more likely. What I will say on a personal level, he's a wonderful guy, humble person, and I've had a lot of dealings with him in his career. Mm -hmm. And one of the few footballers who ring you back uh, and always cut this pleasure to deal with. And from a personal point of view, I, I wished him every success at Celtic. I wanted him to be a success, and I was pretty disappointed that it turned out the way it did. But I, I can't, fault him, can't fault him in terms of being a consummate professional and and brilliant with media guys like myself. So I'll big up to him for that. And I thank him for the times I've, I've spoken to him when he's given me uh, access to, to do interviews with him. And and I uh, if he does part ways with Celtic, I wish him all the best. I hope it's not the end of his career. I hope he can uh, go somewhere and, you know, and enjoy his football again. Because I, I just think it's been a hellish time for him. And he might have suffered because of that. And, to come to your boyhood heroes and it not work out, I, I could think of nothing worse, especially at the tail end of your career, because you probably wanted to wind down and kind of go out in a blaze of glory type thing. Uh, so, but no, I, I for and then if, if anybody does know James, they'll, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. He's a, a wonderful person and uh, can't speak highly enough of him as uh, somebody who I've had personal dealings with uh, throughout my journalistic career. And he was always a great help as well from the young kid at Hamilton coming through. So uh, I always, always have time for people like James McCarthy and I, and I wish him well. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would completely echo everything that you're saying. He does come across as a decent guy as well. He was quite a shy guy with the media with regard to his, uh, yeah. with his, opening, with his opening interview. But yeah, consummate professional. It just hasn't worked out for him. And that's happens in football. Football is a business. And these things happen. Some moves work and some moves don't. Unfortunately for for James McCarthy, even though he was a really good player down in the Premier League, it hasn't worked out for himself to keep his boyhood club. But at least he can say that he did play for the club. Although frequently, you know, he's made up more appearances than you and I, and that's that's something <laughs> yeah. to be to be jealous about. So it's, it's I think it's every supporter's Celtic supporter's dream to to pull on the green and white hoops, and he has he has done that, even though. It hasn't been as many as maybe he thought he was going to get. It is a shame the way it's worked out, but you wish him well. He's still at the club as it stands. He hasn't left, but you would think that maybe something would be organised between his representatives and the club because, you know, effectively, it's kicking the can down the road. He's, he's, he's not going to be playing football for Celtic and he's better off trying his hand somewhere else. Maybe, uh, I'm sure I'm sure he's set up for life with, with his Premier League money that he's won, but, you know, if he wants one final... Hurrah or payday, he wants to go to a different club, then we wish him all the best. It just doesn't seem that he's going to get that game time at Celtic, unfortunately. No. 
Yeah. Not in the slightest. So. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a very blunt <laughs> answer, but a very, a very honest answer as well. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of the players that um, I'm thinking of the players that we were wanting, not that we were wanting to leave. That that sounds horrible. With the, the players that were better off leaving for the good of their careers. I mean, earlier on in the window, Vasilis Barkas agreed a pay off with Celtic. The the ending of his contract, which was a bit of a disastrous time. You know, when when you're talking about a goalkeeper and you can only remember one solid save that they've made, it's a bit of a damning indictment of a of a player that Celtic spent over five million for. I know they were in a bit of a they were in a bit of a, a troublesome situation where they needed a replacement quickly because Fraser Forster looked as if he was going to come back. He didn't, and they had to find a replacement. It didn't work out for him. Um, he was part of a really really hard time for the club with regard to the 2020-21 season and it just didn't work out for him. Yes, he's making saves over in the Eredivisie. Hope he does well. But again, a, a transfer that just did not work out. Yeah, I, we alluded to that the other day that there's certain players who are just, you know, their time at Celtic's tarnished with being part of a certain era. And Barkas is part of the Ajeti. You know, they're part of the guys that came in, you know, and played during the season that shall not be named. And that kind of mud has stuck with them. Not saying they're bad players, but, you know, just, you know, uh, Shane Duffy's another one who will be tarred with that brush, won't he? These guys are decent football players because they signed for Celtic. But you just have, you know, and I I mentioned the likes of Wayne Biggins, Carol Muggleton, guys like that. There's just players that are synonymous with various eras. And it's cruel to say failure, but that that's kind of the way you view them, don't you? You know, Stuart Slater, guys like that, you know, they were talented, talented footballers, but just, you know, for for all, for all whatever reason, they, they failed at a club like Celtic, and there's no shame in that, because not everybody has the mentality to cope with a move like that, and, and the pressures of playing uh, at Celtic, but I think every era spawns kind of those those kind of players, doesn't it? That they're synonymous with certain things, i.e., if it's losing a, a particular game or or doing, you know, scoring an own goal or something like that. You know, the, uh, if you talk about that, there's a player that in the eighties, you know, Willie Garner, who was a wonderful centre half and scored twice in his debut for Celtic, two OGs in a sectional league cup tie against St Man, and that was it. He played about two or three games after that, but it was never really heard of again. And you know, and guys like that aren't they bad footballers, but that follows you around your, your career, you know. And uh, Wally Garner was an excellent player for Aberdeen, and he was highly thought of with Aberdeen. And just you know, that that that, I, that must have been soul destroying for a guy like him, uh, mm. you know. And p- people, older people, will remember that. You know, Celtic lost three one that day to St Man, so. Certain players are synonymous with certain events, and if it's uh, linked to you know, a failure in those certain events, they're, they're kind of never forgotten for all the wrong, for all the wrong reasons, you know. So or, or, or you know they're remembered for all the wrong reasons. So yep. it's uh, and certain players fall into that category, and I guess that's what's happened with the likes of Barkas and uh, Ajete, Sorrow. Uh, and you can't really say that about McCarthy because he's not had the chance to really show what he, what he's made of at Celtic. He's fleeting, I think was the word you said. Mm. Appearances, you know. So, uh, but yeah, you just you wish them all the best. You don't wish them any ill will. It just doesn't happen, so you have to move on, don't you? Yeah, just want to bring up a quick comment that was addressed to the, to the two of us. What is the story with Merlin? I'm sure it's Quentin Merlin that they're talking about. Look at his Wikipedia page. Apparently, he's a Celtic player. Now, Tony, you or I could easily go on to yeah. a, a Wikipedia page. That's the thing. It's in the public domain. Anyone can make an account and change yeah, you can the change contents. Maybe. You can change yeah. anything. Yeah. But the so, thing is, they've got bots. They've got bots, much like we had bots this morning. They've got bots <laughs> on their pages that can instantly fact check, and they they'll know if something's not right with regard to that. That'll be up for what maybe ten twenty minutes max before it gets brought down. Um, there is Quentin Merlin. Someone was saying in the comments that he was playing tonight um, against Marseille, I believe. So 
you know, a first team player, that's going to cost a premium price. I don't think Celtic were willing to pay that for that player at this moment in time, which is unfortunate because. Uh, Stuart Ross, who, who writes for the Celtic Way, did a whole scouting report on him and he said that he would be an instant upgrade in the left-back position. Physical, good crosser of the ball, very attacking-minded, but can do the hard defending as well. Yeah, anybody can edit a, a Wikipedia page and it's, what, it's worth not getting your hopes up when you see something on Wikipedia. <laughs> wait until, the, wait until the, the outlets do say it. Or even the foreign outlets, because I, you find that a lot of Celtics, um, a lot of Celtics transfer dealings have broken from foreign outlets before they break in Scotland. It happened with Lagabielka. It happened with uh, Navrovsky this summer. It also happened with Yang and and, and Quan. So, yeah, they usually happen abroad, and the the news filters through across here. But, um, that might be just due to the fact that Celtic are quite tight-lipped with regard to transfer dealings. They don't want to announce it to the to the press in Scotland, but the other teams maybe aren't as tight-lipped and they do let off a couple of things. But yeah, um, don't get too excited by Wikipedia is all that I'll say to everybody. Um, I've been stung, in, stung before in the past. You see Messi signed for like a... You see Messi signed for Stoke, Stoke City. That could be up there for 20 minutes. People could go mental and then it gets changed. Can play up front with Haksabanovic then, can't he? That's sad. <laughs> you know, imagine if Haksabanovic <laughs> was on the bench because of Lionel <laughs> Messi. Uh, but he'd be screaming that he should be in front of Lionel Messi in the, the pecking order, wouldn't he? Uh, so, but there you go. Now, with but 13 minutes to go in the transfer window, I think we're safe and on safe ground, Ryan, by saying that probably not any more signings at Celtic uh, coming in before the midnight deadline. I, I have enjoyed it, to be fair. I, I did think it was if it was a, a quiet window, but, you know, I wouldn't say you'd run out of things to talk about, but, you know, you never do run out of things to talk about when you're talking about safety. But I thought it'd be a more slower event if there was nothing to talk about in terms of transfer news, but it's actually flown in. I'm quite I was going to say the, I was going to say the exact same. In, yeah, but... and we've still got 630 people watching. We really do appreciate everybody. You know, we know we understand that this is unsociable hours, and but I think it comes with the territory of transfer deadline day. People are still up at the time, and they still want to see all the moves happening down south. Um, I was just having a look at a couple of the ones that were transpiring down south. A uh, former Ross County player, uh, Ross Stewart, who scored. Against Celtic in that that famous two nothing game, uh, yeah, but the first the first day uh, cup game that Celtic had lost in years, basically, um, he's moved to to Southampton. That's a phenomenal move for him. And a former Celtic player in Ollie Burke has moved from Werder Bremen to uh, to Birmingham <laughs> he, City. He just keeps moving around, doesn't he? Ollie Burke. He's one of these kind of players. That, Robbie Keane, knows how to to move, all, yeah. uh, Robbie Keane used to always move club, didn't he? So it's like I yeah. always thought Robbie Keane was a terrific talent, but he could never ever settle anywhere. He kind of don't start this for <laughs> Irish, please, because that'll catch on. You'll give you'll give the bots something to do, and then they'll all jump on. Watch this. I'll get about twenty people saying meow in the in the comments section now. We'll probably have started something. I'm just waiting for them to come in just now. But yeah, um ten players through the door. Um, there's a lot of business getting done down south, which shows that there is still a there is still a meaning yeah. behind deadline day. But Celtic seem to do most of their business before deadline day. They did bring in one player today. They brought in two players yesterday, so they were getting involved with the, the festivities of the of the the last week of the transfer window. But yeah, it's a uh, what what ranking would you give this? Just a general question out of ten, or a general ranking out of ten. What would you give this transfer window? And I'll, I'll open this up to the, the comment section as well. Out of ten, how how probably, how high? Probably about six and a half. Six and a half. I'd go about six. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I yeah. Can I, officially confirm to Kaiser that I haven't been for an app Kaiser, so I just. Uh, Freshened myself up basically <laughs> went for another shower around about half eight and kind of tried to look as fresh as I could, but no no sleep till bedtime, as they say. Uh, we've been on since ten o'clock this morning. Well, uh, been on working from about nine o'clock this morning, uh, preparing and stuff like that for the the briefing. So it's been a long day, but we don't complain because we're doing something that lots of people would love to do. So we always appreciate the privileged position that we're in writing and getting to talk about 
the club that we love. So uh, certainly if a day of sleep deprivation occurs because it's transfer deadline day, it doesn't bother me. So well, I actually think, uh, and, and thank you for everybody for um, joining in the comments in terms of giving your out of 10, your, your rankings out of 10. It's quite interesting that because Celtic have signed 10 players, so you could even go down to the fact of every signing contributes to one out of 10. So you could you could count up all the players that have came in and then bring up a score based on that. But I, I think I'm I'm just going off the fact that it's just above middle of the road. I think satisfactory, a couple of decent signings, signings that have shown enough. So six out of ten, I think it's fair enough. Still not got a rip roaring from Tony. Here we go. Well, I tell you what, people were asking for predictions. Uh Ryan for Sunday's game. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a rip roaring, free scoring, never boring Rangers now, Glasgow Celtic two. There you go. Clean sheet as well. Yeah. I will take yeah. it. I'll take it. Yeah, I would take a two nothing just now. I'd take a one nothing just now. I don't I don't even care who scores or that is as long as Celtic were to come Rangers out with Celtic three points. Two. Yeah, do you, um, I, I think it all depends on the way the game goes, though, as well. I know we'll be talking about this, and we'll probably do a pre match preview of the team when it gets announced. But um, it all depends on the way the game goes because you know, a draw could be a really disappointing result if Celtic get ahead and then lose a late equaliser, whereas a draw could be a great result because Celtic then go behind and they bring it back and get an equaliser. It's all about the balance of the game. So yes, a win, a win embodies all of that because a win is a win at the end of the day. But even a draw, depending on the way a draw is obtained, it can either be a good result or a bad result. The only things that are certain are wins and losses, are bad results and good results, respectively. So a draw, you're in that sort of a middle of the road purgatory zone. Um, but I'm just hoping that if Celtic do get a draw, then they've got a draw from a losing position and a draw rather than a winning position and a draw. Seven minutes to go, Ryan, the transfer window. It looks like everything's been put away. Celtic won't probably won't be doing any more. Business. It's not getting slammed shut. I think we're in safe. No, it's not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> you don't like that? <laughs> no, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It doesn't bang shut. It doesn't slam shut. It just closes. There you go. I was talking just nicely. Things. It's like when you're when you're coming home late and you're putting the <laughs> you're putting the window down just ever so slightly. It's, it's just nice. There's not a lot of clamour or anything. There's not any late business that needs to be done. I was explaining before. I, I, I had an old journalism professor he used to slap me about the head when I wrote that football managers ranted and raved, screamed, and you know, eh, blasted. They just, just slap me about the head. Say they don't do any of these things. They say he said, she said, right tight and get it right. So stuff like that. He would go to town with me on, and he was always big on. He always asked me about when you were stretchered off. You know, he's like, no such thing. You're taken off on a stretcher. <laughs> he, would, he would always, you know. So these things kind of they stick. You know, you learn from learned people. You they, they always stick. So. He would be a stickler for that, so the transfer window would never bang shut. It did you ever, did you ever uh, describe players as jetting in to seal a deal? Or oh, oh, but the, you know, it was always you would when you uh, when when teams played in Europe, you know, say Celtic were playing like Croatia, Zagreb, and you would speak to a player who'd say, "Oh, they would, they were uh, confident of getting a result." You know, you'd always give it. Cocky Croats <laughs> flew into Glasgow last night and vowed to end Celtic's European dream, that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, Stuart Barr, God rest him, wonderful journalistic professor, uh, would slap me around the head for that, you know. But, you know, you, you, you learn. You're young in your career and you're starting out, you will learn many things from many wise people. And I, I, as I always, I'm often fond of saying that you, that's when you, Shut that, and you open them, and you open your eyes, and you know you you, you pick it up. You 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 get better, as I say. Uh, my my bar is set ridiculously high with Michael Vanny, who's the best sports writer bar none. And uh, you one day you hope to just catch that uh, that right. And uh, I'm still still hoping, Ryan. <laughs> 
That's it. We've we'll got four, mi- four minutes until that window. It doesn't slam shut, it just closes, as Tony <laughs> says. Um, I'm going to remember that from now on. Every time I hear that slam shut, I'll think of Tony Haggerty. Just <laughs> quietly closing a window. That'll be in my head now for, for the rest of the time, for the rest I'm on this, the rest of the time that I'm on this planet. That's what that will remind me of. So thank you very much for giving me that that image in my head. Um, no worries. Just imagine you whispering, she... free scoring, never born, and then you're just closing <laughs> the window. <laughs> Black rolling, free scoring, never born. And I told the story about that before. It was a, uh, it was actually myself that picked it up wrong. A boy called Jim Cullen who used to own the Montrose Bar, which was situated near the record in Montrose Street. They bulldozed it years ago, but every time I would go into the pub, Jim would always say, You know, he had a phrase for it, but in my mind, it was rip roaring, free scoring, never boring. And I met him one day and he told me, You know, you've been saying it all wrong. It was, I can't remember his version of it, but it, it just morphed into this rip roaring, free scoring, never boring. But I did credit him and I said, Look, this was a guy, Jim Cullen, and uh, you know, you would walk in and he would just, that's what he'd shout. He, 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 would, he was a proprietor of the bar and he was a larger than life character, a great Celtic man. And I, I loved him to bits. And it didn't matter how many times I went to the bar and he said it, I would just crease my sides laughing. It was just all on the delivery, you know. And, and I used it one day in a podcast and it became a thing. And I, and I, and I, I owned up immediately and said, look, it's not mine. It, 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 well, the, the words rip rolling free scoring never boring eventually became mine because it was a variation of what Jim had said. But I did credit him and say, Look, it was this guy that I kinda I got it from and but it just became synonymous with myself. But I, as I always say the it's the Celtic families if if supporters are happy using it and it gives them a smile, then it was the same uh, for me when, when Jim said it. And I met him recently in the battlefield rest and I whispered it in his ear and he turned around to me and he said, you've been saying it wrong for years, YouTube, you know, and I was killing myself laughing and it was great to see him and uh, yeah, I, I say he was a wonderful man, wonderful Celtic man and just a, a cracking guy and a, a larger than life character, one of those guys who, that when you meet them, they're unforgettable, you know. Two minutes to go and this um, exciting deadline day, you know, this extravaganza transfer <laughs> special in which we've talked about everything from transfer windows very very uh, quietly shutting to tales of the past <laughs> to James McCarthy playing two games or three games for Celtic. You know, it's been an extravaganza. It's been a journey this hour and 46 minutes and we're so glad that you've all been there. But if I could give you one player to join in the next minute, you've only got a minute to decide and they'll instantly join the club straight away, who would it be? Anybody? Anybody at all? Playing just now, or, or I'm going to say playing just past, now because past. I know what, because because I know what your answer is going to be. <laughs> you know what to do. That's so be so it's just like, there is no there is no uh, no other that man there. If you can see my t-shirt, <laughs> yeah, of course he's got it on. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? It would be that man there. 24-7, twice on a Sunday. Uh, but if you're talking about players just now, I don't know, that's, that's, a, that's a tall order, isn't it? Uh, Mbappe, you'd probably say. <sighs> Only because Messi's winning. coming to the end of his career, I, I would have taken Messi in his pomp and ceremony, but mm-hmm. not before Maradona and his pomp and yeah, ceremony. That's a, that's a popular answer as well from Retro Celtic. Um, he's now playing his trade in the Basque country, so good good luck to him. And with that, the transfer window is now officially closed and I can also announce that Celtic play Rangers tomorrow in the league. That's official. That is that is official news. It's happening. Celtic are playing Rangers at Ibrook Stadium tomorrow. <laughs> I want a score prediction. Did you say 2-0? Was it 2-0 you said? I said just, I'll yeah. take a 2 nothing just now. Is that in the first half or is that at full time? Uh, Full time. I'll, 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 okay. I'll go with okay. that. A goal in each half. Yeah, I think Palmer might even get one of those goals. Ooh, I think it'll be, be a debut to remember for uh, Nat Phillips with Lager Bielka beside him. There you go. I think uh, I can't see. I, I can't see Nat Phillips not scoring. I'll be honest. I think <laughs> from a no. Lewis, pa- Lewis Palmer cross into the box. Phillips header. Two two one Celtic. I'm going to go for. Yeah. 
we've, we we've lasted an hour. Dreamers and Optimus, aren't we? Uh, so yeah, we'll be close to dreaming with the with the time that we've been on. <laughs> we'll be close to our beds. <laughs> one one minute past twelve. But thank you everybody that's joined in for this transfer special. We haven't really brought you any transfers. We've talked about the trans the ten transfers that have happened over the course of the window. We've spoke about them all. But we, we we really couldn't have done this show without you guys. We really, really do appreciate it. Um, we hope that your weekend's really good and we hope that Celtic can do the business on Sunday. There's a positive feeling about the club just now. I feel like the optimism is growing and you're just hoping that we can meet that crescendo on Sunday if we beat Rangers at Ibrox or if we can get a good result given the circumstances of the game that's ahead of us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you are interested in what we do, I need to plug the channel, as always. Um, visit www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Also, please press the subscribe button at the bottom of this video. It will really help us. The more people that we can get subscribed, the more people that will watch the videos. And then, in turn, they'll be commenting on the shows. More more voices is always a good thing. We're always looking to expand on the, the community that we've built up, that Tony's very kindly built up with the likes of Aidan and Sean, and it's just me. I, I know I've been here for four or five months now, but I, feel, I really feel as if I'm part of it, and we're, we're growing the very much so. We're growing the community together, so I'm, I'm loving seeing all the new faces joining every day, and we're hoping that we can continue that and keep on going. We really do appreciate all your help, uh, Tony. Have you got anything else to say before we end this transfer extravaganza an hour and fifty minutes? <laughs> I just want to say thanks to everybody that tuned in. Uh, really enjoyed your company. I hope you enjoyed the stories. I, you know, it's when you've been a journalist for more than half your life, twenty six years of my fifty one years. Then you've you've got a story to tell, and when people ask you, I'll always endeavour to try and give you some stories and with humility and humour as best as I can. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing better than talking about Celtic. And when you talk about lesbian lines and stuff like that, it just, it's, you know, it's, it's something that's very close to my heart. It's something that's close to everybody's heart. The club's close to everybody's heart. And, uh, yeah, I don't do it to be the big I am. I do it because a wise man once told me that they're not my stories. They're, they're to be shared and by sharing them, then you reclaim ownership. We bit mm -hmm. deep and meaningful, but I know exactly what he meant. And I feel that sometimes by doing that, it's cathartic and it gives people an insight into the, the job that we do. And uh, I'm grateful for doing this job for so long. And uh, and I'm trying to pass on some of that fonts of knowledge and wisdom to the man who's sitting on the other side of my screen and uh, the boy's doing good, as they say, at this minute in time. Appreciate it. I feel like the, the Padawan, you're the you're the Master Jedi at the moment. I know you've used those <laughs> quotes before when describing when des describing you and Sean. So, you know, I'm following in the footsteps of, of a really good um a really good former employee. And yeah, learning from the best, that's it. Just trying to do better every single day. But I really do appreciate everybody joining in in the comments. We'll be back on Sunday, Sunday morning, yeah, Sunday morning before the game, I think we'll be reacting to the team lineups. If not, then we'll be we'll be on a couple of hours after the game to dissect. Whatever happens, win, lose, or draw, we will be there and we will talk about the game uh, following its conclusion. Talk about all the talking points. Talking about all the talking points. That's, that's not a great sentence. Discussing <laughs> all the talking points from the game. See, I'm, I'm using Grammarly in my head. I think I've installed it in my head as well. Um, it's after midnight. It's been mo a more than a 12-hour day. So yeah, yeah, The land of nod is calling here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Enjoy the start of the start middle and end of your weekend and hopefully Celtic do the business. We'll be back on Sunday morning to discuss the starting lineup. But until then, cheers guys and have a good rest of your night. Take care.